Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we're going to show you how to define a model in RAM concept. In this final video within this series, we're going to show you how to view and edit your structural geometry. A lot of the tools that we'll learn in this video will be applicable for several of the different layers or object types that can be created in RAM concept for viewing and editing. The first tool we're going to show you is how to control the visible objects on the currently selected layer. On each layer in the standard toolbar, you'll have your visible objects icon available. And within the visible objects, you're going to see your current layer selected and all the default settings for that particular layer. Now you can control what's being shown on that layer by selecting the different options. And you can also select some additional features, like say, for example, I would like to hatch my slab openings and maybe my slab areas. If I select that and click OK, I can see the different areas have been hatched on my screen. I can also, using the same command, control things from other layers that are visible on this layer. For example, if I go to my drawing import layer, I can see all of my CAD drawing layers are currently visible. I use these layers in order to provide additional snap points when modeling my structural objects. Once I, now that I'm done modeling my structural objects, I can turn off my CAD drawing layers and then click OK to clean up my drawing. The next tool we'll show you how to use is your selection tool. The selection tool is available in our action tools over at the right hand side of your screen. By selecting this tool then we can then select any type of object on our screen. To select a single object we can just double click on the object we want to select. To select a group of objects we can draw a fence around those objects. To deselect any object, we can hold down the shift key and then unselect that particular object by either drawing a fence around it or double clicking. If we want to add more items to the selection, we can again keep the shift key down and then add more items. Now if we've selected too many items and we want to narrow our search, we can also use the filter tool. This will allow you to deselect certain types of objects. Say, for example, I would select all of my columns, but nothing else that's currently selected. I can deselect everything else and click OK. And then all the columns that were previously selected will still be selected, and everything else will be turned off. To unselect everything, you can just click anywhere in the main screen. Now, there may be times where the properties of a particular element or group of elements needs to change after it's already been modeled. To change the properties of any element type, you first need to just select the element and then edit the section properties. To do that, we're going to use our selection tool, which is already active, and select the elements we want to change. For this model, we're going to draw a fence around the entire plan and use the filter tool to select just our columns. Once the columns are selected, we're going to right click on our screen and then select Selection Properties, which will allow you to change any of the properties that were previously defined. Here, let's go ahead and change the height instead of 10 feet to 12 feet below the slab. We'll click OK, and now the new properties will be considered. Now, if you change the size of any type of element or the properties, you may also want to regenerate the mesh after performing that change. The next command we're going to show you is how to perform a copy and paste on your particular model. You're going to see on my screen that I already have all of the columns on this plan selected. Now if I want to copy these elements and say set the supports to be above the slab, I'm going to select the elements I want to copy. I can right click and use the copy command. Now while I'm on this plan, if I just right click and say paste, it's going to paste the new elements at exactly the same location that they were from the copy command. If I want to modify these properties then, I'm just going to right click and say Selection Properties and only the pasted elements are currently selected and now I can say that I have some above the slab as well and we'll click OK. So that's a quick and easy way to say I have columns below the slab and the identical columns above the slab as well. Next we're going to show you how to modify your geometry by using one of the tools available in the Active Tools list. Here you can see I have a tool in order to move any type of element. I can stretch the element. I can also rotate and mirror a selection. 
Let's go ahead and on our screen, I'm going to hold down my shift key and we're going to select the two columns at the right hand side of my slab depression. What I'd like to do is I'd like to move these two columns seven feet towards the right of my screen. So over in my action tools, I'm now going to use my move icon. And here I can go ahead and click on one of the columns. I'm going to click on its center point and then I would like to move it over. Now if I have a grid location or CAD background, I can use that to snap the new center line of the column too. If I don't have that, I may want to go ahead and use my command prompt to enter in the new location of these columns. I can enter in the actual coordinates, which for this column will be at 35 in the x direction and negative 0.25 in the y direction, or I can use my relative coordinates. Now the co relative coordinates would be able to tell the program, I want to move it this many feet in this direction or this many feet in the other direction. To use relative coordinates, I'm going to enter an R to signal to the program for the relative. And I'm going to tell it how many I want it to move in the X or Y direction. Here I want it to move 7 feet in the X direction. I'm going to give this a positive number so it moves to the right. And then 0 feet in the Y. And then if I just hit enter, it's going to move those columns over by 7 feet. Now if I want to verify this, let me zoom in now. I can always use my dimension icon to go ahead and measure that distance. And I can see that that distance is 7 feet. So what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing the column above is 7 feet over from the column below. Now as some extra information, we can use any of these tools to move, stretch, or rotate whatever we need to. If I held down the shift key, what that would do is it would make a copy of the element while using that tool. So if I held down shift, what it would do is it would keep the original elements where they are and then create an additional element with the same exact properties seven feet over from that one. In addition to that, I can always also use my stretch tool to maybe stretch this area, this slab area. First, I need to select the slab I want to stretch and then I can go down to the next tool below, click on my stretch icon, and then I can just grab the corners of the slab to stretch them to their new location. Again, using my snap tools if applicable. In addition to the stretch tool, there may be times where you need to change the geometry of your overall slab area. And you may need to add a certain snap point or a node along the perimeter. So let's go ahead and select now, using our selection tool, our overall slab area. If we need to add a node along any of this area, we can click on the Add Node icon, and then we can create a node along that particular area. We can also deactivate that tool. Now, whenever we use that stretch tool, we'll be able to drag that particular slab area over as needed. If you want to delete any type of node, we can click Delete Node, click on that node, which will also have an effect on the slab area. The last tool we're going to show you is how to create a new perspective. Up in my Layers menu, I'm now going to select Layers followed by New Perspective. And this is a way of creating a new layer or a new plan that you can use later on. Here I'm going to name it Mesh input perspective and the layer it's going to reference will be the mesh input layer. Then I can enter which visible objects I want to show and I'm going to go ahead and show everything from the mesh input layer and then we'll click OK. And here you can see I've created a perspective of the slab for my mesh input plan. As I change items on the mesh input plan, the perspective plan can automatically be updated. This concludes our process for creating model geometry in RAM concept. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.